All right, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world, my name is Jason Levine, and it's very wonderful to see you here today on Adobe Live. And today's audio masterclass is going to be based around doing some live temp scoring, <laughs> i.e., not meant to be the final score necessarily, um, in Adobe Audition. And this is going to be based around a piece that we showcased a couple of a uh, couple of masterclasses ago, I think. Um, so we're going to do sort of a, a horror style kind of soundtrack, leveraging Audition and a bunch of the synths and things that you've seen here. But I'm also going to be using um, some virtual instruments. And unlike the way that I normally do this, where I've got a separate setup with a separate machine running all the VSTIs fed directly into Audition, I'm doing it on the same system. Now, because Audition doesn't natively support VSTI, slightly backwards way that I have to do it. So I'm going to be laying things in slightly blind. You'll see what I mean. This is this is a bit experimental. But ultimately, the whole concept of today's masterclass is just scoring to picture and trying to identify areas where we want to add some emphasis, um, add some kind of emotion and reaction. When you when you see the piece that I'm scoring to, which you've already seen, I, this will be this will kind of seem silly. But I take scoring very seriously. So that is an interesting meaning. Uh, you know, we're going to do this as if it was a proper film, even though it happens to be um, something shot by my um, eight-year-old offspring. So with that, of course, we're coming to you uh, live on YouTube, Behance, and Twitter Periscope. So thank you so much for joining. A couple of quick shout-outs, of course, to Nana, to Robert, Steve, Festus, Cosimo. Always great to see you, and thank you so much for the props for yesterday's. Uh, stream based around the Adobe Stock Film Festival. It was so cool to meet Monica and James, and I highly encourage all of you, if you haven't seen the submissions um, from the Adobe Stock Film Festival, you can find them uh, here on Behance, uh, on, on Adobe Live, rather, uh, as well as on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. So you definitely want to check that out. What's up, Wade and Davika? Nice to see you. Cal, always lovely to see you as well. Okay, Avia, how's it going? Good morning, Diover. All right, Neo, Bapu, Dr. Abiodun, Alawiola, Alayowola. Sorry if I just butchered that. Very nice to see you as well. Thank you. Boromir plays. Great to see you too. And coming to us over on the scope, we've got Desiree and Callie, Paul, Michael and long, long, and it's nice to see you. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to switch over my screen here. Uh, in fact, here, let me just launch, I'm going to launch Premiere while I'm in the process of doing that. So this is, um, I've already got the audition set up here, kind of ready to go. As I mentioned, though, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. So again, this is going to be a combination of laying in some instrumentation against this um, Jason, Jason versus Pennywise um, movie that my... <laughs> You know, trying to find things to do in quarantine with uh, with the young ones has been interesting. So, of course, I put them to work and said, well, you should start shooting and editing movies rather than playing games. And uh, my one did just that. So that's what this is. We've seen this before. It's it's fun. I'll play it for you here. Uh, so we're going to score something to this. And it's, it's pretty short. It's only about, let me see, what is the total time on this? Yeah, it's a minute and 20 seconds. So... Not not long, but again, there's moments in here that we want to mark that are kind of more significant, that are going to need a little bit more emphasis. Maybe the music changes ever so slightly, maybe not. And then along the way, the plan is to integrate uh, some um, soft synths via contact. So you can see here, I've got contact pulled up and currently have some session strings pulled up here. I don't know if I'm going to go into um, any of the other things. I also pulled up like a, a Hammond B3. I like to use Hammonds. They're, they're great for creating tension and just adding kind of gritty distortion and noise. So we may get to some of that as well. All of this laid into Audition. And then outside of that, of course, um, adding a couple of the different cameras here. We're going to be playing some of this, controlling the uh, contact stuff via this synth here. And then I was also thinking about, again, for emphasis and creepiness, and my camera's a little tilted, adding a little bit of the vintage Moog analog synth in there, another great way to kind of integrate just some super dark and uh, creepy sounds. Because this is a creepy, this is a creepy edit. So <laughs> always makes me think of that line, oh, it's a creepy shop, he's a creepy bloke. What film is that? First person who knows what that is gets my enduring love. All right, that's a creepy shop, he's a creepy bloke. <laughs> 
All right. So um, why don't we just start first by uh, taking a look at this masterpiece, this masterpiece creation, and uh, you'll see what we're working against. Now, there's currently no music in here. We did a little temp music, I think, um, just stock temp music a couple of weeks ago, which gave me some of the ideas that I wanted to use for my own comp uh, composition. Um, since then, I had my, uh, my son add some. He wanted it to look, you know, very film-like and old and gritty. So last week's stream where we talked about retro uh, video looks, he had a whole, a whole series of different overlays and things that I talked about. I think I showed one of them that I had purchased a while back. They're uh, rampant design film overlays, and they're just really dirty. So it scratches and blotches, and there's a little bit of gate weave and grain. So this is, um, take a look at this. This is uh, Jason versus Pennywise with a, a surprise, surprise visit by one of my favorites, Shark Puppet Imposter. Now again, no sound here. There will eventually be music. See, people are guessing. Not Little Shop, not Shaun of the Dead. All right. I think he did a good job with the overlays. They look pretty cool. Again, his choices for text. I helped him recolor some of that stuff. Made very easy in the essential graphics. What's going on? Where's my cheese? <coughs> hey, cheese, got any cheese? Pop the food. <coughs> I guess they didn't have any cheese. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Subscribe and like this video and click that notification button. See you guys next time. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> the machete is flipped. Oh, is it? What? Oh, it is. It's backwards. Oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, Jason's been in, in the water for a while and he's got that mask on, you know. Still good for, I guess, Lansing, but that's very funny. Gosh, you know, I've watched him work in this a million times. I didn't even... <laughs> you know, if I wanted to get really, really creative, I guess I could go into After Effects and like... You know, go to Photoshop, flip it, and then mask it, track it, and then replace it. But, yeah, you know. Very good. Ah, uh, yes, Room 9 podcast. Oh, and Anthony. Anthony uh, Carvajal, you got it as well. All right, so Room 9 and Anthony C. Very well done. Yes, indeed. That was the one and only Ron Weasley. So, uh, very, very cool. He was about to slice him uppercut. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uppercut style, exactly. All right, now typically, um, if I were going to be scoring something to video, my general workflow would be to um, dynamically link this from Premiere um, by editing an audition this way, right? So, and I've shown this workflow in a bunch of times before, sending the video through dynamic link. Um, and there's no audio settings really done on here, so there's nothing that's going to need, need to transfer over. Um, for this particular one, because the edit is locked at this point, uh, and I just wanted a little more flexibility, and I know that I'm going to be, uh, you know, scrubbing around and moving around a lot in Audition, I actually just did a little render. I didn't do the render here um, because I don't need uh, I don't need access to all of the original dialogue elements. I can have those baked into the video for reference. Ultimately. The idea for me is to send either stems back to Premiere, which you can do whether you use this or not, or you use just a, a pre-exported video, or just send a stereo mix back into Premiere, sync it up here, and you know be done with it. Theoretically, I could also export directly from Audition using Media Encoder. So what you see here, this is just a quick, this is just a quick render of the same thing. Um, in 720p, again, you know, uh, just to make life a little bit easier uh, and uh, just so that I know, you know, I'm not going to get bogged down with like, 
you know, and any, any kind of additional thing that's running in the background, especially because I'm going to be dialing in contact. So let's talk about how you do that. Now, without having access to VSTIs, and without having VSTIs on a separate system feeding this system here, it's very, very tricky uh, in the way that you do this. And the only way that really, I mean, I guess there's a couple different ways. This is, this is the easiest way, is to essentially record a loop back, all right? So in order to do that, first of all, if there's any audio present in the timeline here, uh, I'm going to mute it. Now, you may think this is a lot of work just to be able to use this all natively in Audition, but that is literally what I do. Now, again, typically this is coming from a separate system. I don't have to do any kind of muting or anything. But to record via a loopback, anything that's going to be playing audio will get recorded into what I'm playing. So that first needs to be muted. So on this track here, so here, we'll just call this one dialogue. All right. Wait, there's also a coffee cup in the background. Oh, yeah, no. There, there, and, hey, that was in the kitchen, you know, so there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. We didn't clean the, we didn't clear the set. <laughs> Surprise, my other son doesn't kind of walk through at some point. Okay, so we're going to call this strings01. Not quite sure what those are going to be. I may, I may retitle that track later. Under our inputs here, let's go to stereo. And um, this is now something that I have as part of my audio device. Now, depending upon the kind of device you're working with, um, you, you may not have this as an input option. There are also third party, in fact, I think there's, I think it's actually called Loopback now. It was once called Soundflower, I believe, for the Mac, which is a tool that does just that. It'll take any system audio and allow you to use it as if it were a, a, a legit input or output for that matter. So I'm going to, in this case, choose the Focusrite loop input. And then the most important thing here is that the volume of this track needs to be brought all the way down, all right? Evil Schultz, I usually toss in a two pop at top and tail to make sure the sync is good on round trip. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, um, again, because uh, in this case, it's it's starting at the actual top of, of, of the edit in this case, um, I'm not super concerned. Also, it's not, you know, this is kind of free form classical here. If it were something that were beat timed, I'd be a little more careful with it. But yes, for, for a typical production of any series, more, I shouldn't say that because he could be watching. This is very serious. But for, for most productions, yes, I'll have, I'll have some kind of uh, clapboard or just a snap or something at the beginning and the end just to kind of make sure that everything stays aligned. Definitely, definitely. JSJ, what's up? Awesome. Dallin McNabola. I'd be a proud dad. Yes, indeed. Gavin, what's up? Zachary. Oh, yeah, you can see me beaming, right? It's so cool. Okay, so we have the loopback set here. I want to make sure that my instrument is enabled here. Let me go ahead and get my headphones. I'll need those. So I'm put these on. And I want to start with some strings. Oh, Room 9 is saying loopback is great, well worth $100. Yeah, absolutely. And, and from what I gather, um, it's infinitely more... Um, it's more stable than, uh, than um, Soundflower used to be. Not knocking Soundflower, but Soundflower was free, and it was anyone who used it before. We used to use it in the Twitch days when we were all on one system. A little, little scary at times. What's up, Polk Music? Laura Mipsum. Baby shark. <laughs> okay. So that's all working. Let me see if the other, uh, switch over to this camera for a second here, and we're just going to make sure that these other things are working here as well. Change the uh, channels here. Oh, and here, I got to make sure that we're getting level too. I should have saved that. I liked that. Okay. That's the thing with this kind of... Uh, where's the camera? It's there. That's the thing with this kind of music is that, um, <laughs> one, this is a temp score, but two, if it's kind of freeform, you know, any kind of minor second that you're going to introduce... Oh. 
it, 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 it already has a real creepy feel. And of course, the most classic, which is like Psycho. Now, this is, I'm currently working with a, with a sustained um, and or accented. You know, any, any minor second thing is really just gonna give you that sort of tension. Okay, now this is coming in a little hot, actually. Okay, so we've got level. Now I'm gonna have to mute my mic as well, as you can see, because it's looping back. So anything that's fed into there is gonna get recorded, all right? So here, in fact, let me do this. I'm gonna just quickly add myself into this so you can see both angles. All right. Bear with me for a second here. All right, stick this down here. All right. How's that working now? Is that good? We're getting any? We're not getting any weird, uh, weird echoes or delays or anything. Hopefully, I don't think so. Claire Abdullah, F. Smitik, what's up? All right, good to see you. Okay, so why don't we uh, give this a shot? So again, I'm just going to quickly mute myself here. All right, and uh, I think I'm going to start with something just very simple. <laughs> Maybe I should start with this. Okay, I'm gonna keep them separate. So let's just start with the minor second. It's gonna be kind of harsh. Is that too loud for anybody, by the way? By the way, it's just worth pointing out that the advancement, I'm coming from two angles here, it's strange. The advancement in the, the the soft synth stuff these days is so amazing because you can just hear you can hear the the rosin on the bow. This is really really striking. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get this going. All right. I'm gonna mute myself. I'll come back to you. I didn't love that, but that's okay. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that how that is. I don't love it, but we'll see. I wonder if it's just going through because the level is up here. No, oh, it's still going through. I, I'm I'm perplexed how that's still registering, but I'm not worried about it. All right, I may, I may redo that because I don't like those, intro, those additional notes that I added here. But you get the idea, I think, in terms of the tension that I'm going for there. Let's see what this sounds like.
So I think I got the idea that I want. That's it. That's it. Okay. So now I'm going to add that part. And I'm not going to listen back to the other because I don't want that to translate into this existing <laughs> recording. Again, not, not concerned about that, but about timing or any of that stuff. It's more just laying these pieces in uh, individually. Yeah, why is, I wonder why that is. Where is that coming from? I just have to find this real quickly. No. Ah. Okay. Found it. All right. <laughs> Why was this mic enabled uh, in the loopback? I don't know. Should have gone there first. All right, well now I know, good. I knew I'd find it, okay. So let's do it again now and, uh, oh, Phantom of the Opera, oh yes. Oh, and you know, that's a good one for organ too. That's a great one. I used to know that, all the music to that when I was a kid. <laughs> Now, hold on. Now, why am I getting some weird phasiness here? Oh, because this is open. That's why. Okay. So what was I just doing? Hold on. One of the things that I can do here, let's see if we can change this. Um, tremolo, maybe? Had to select the velocity. So again, this is all velocity sensitive, aftertouch sensitive. So uh, you have to set the level at which. You know, and, I'm, and I'm playing these pretty percussively. Also, I haven't I haven't tweaked any of the settings on this, so this might even be slightly too responsive. All right, let's mute myself. Here we go.
All right, a little flair for the dramatic there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Laura Mipsum, a bit like the music in Interstellar for the mountains. Love it. Nice. Sweet. Love the shirt, Jason. Big fan of what Aaron is doing. Oh, yeah, you know, and it's funny. I uh, So, yeah, Aaron Nace of Flurn, uh, someone who's been on Adobe Live countless times. When I first met Aaron in person years ago, already very well aware of all of his training and everything. And uh, he had brought a bunch of swag shirts to the studio. And I remember, and I normally I don't, I'm, I don't care. My era of like, ooh, T-shirt is kind of past that um, in general because you find that eventually you just start like, mm, I need to buff the hood of my car and then always use swag shirts for that. These, however, I think he gave me, so he had like five of them and I just went, oh, yeah, I felt them. The fabric was amazing. The cut, spectacular. And uh, they were just so soft and so nice and I just love these. So I have like five of them and I wear, I wear them all the time. They're wonderful. And hey, you know, community learning, love it. Flurn, Aaron Nace, great dude. Okay. What is up, Aunt Pruitt? Nice to see you, man. F. Sminnick, nice and creepy. When I press on the keyboard, it doesn't sound like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, hey, you know that—that that maybe that's my next uh, my next step is private uh, pri private instruction. No, I did that once before. It was. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I was I was a very mean piano teacher. So let's see. All right. So let's play a little bit of this back. Let's see if any of this works at all. Just listen to the sound of this one here. I kind of got a little bit too much of the tremolo in there, but we'll see. It might work. Okay, that, 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 that could work. All right, I like it. It's not, not, not brilliant, but it's going somewhere. I, li I like the direction. Um, so now the question is, I wanna add one more string piece to this and then uh, we're gonna switch instrumentation here and we'll get off of the, um, I think we'll move over to the Moog, which I'm not hearing at the moment. Um, okay, so let's go into our loop again, turn this down, turn this down, all of those down to the ground. I right, have all the different options here. So um, I wanted to do, like these are pretty cool. The, whoops, okay, now we'll keep this, um, let's keep this staccato. Okay, let's go with that.
No, we could do something like that, or so. Um, what do we slide up, slide down? What are these? Okay, I have, an, I have an idea first. Okay, some staccato. Okay, yes, okay. And we'll try this somewhere in the middle here. All right, so we're gonna do some little staccato arpeggios. Um. Should have done my workout this morning on my hands. My body got it already. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so this is gonna be staccato. I should have been labeling these. This is, uh, um, legato, tremolo, 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 okay. Uh, and this will be staccato. Okay. Everyone's in amazement, in awe, or you're just not saying anything. Also, I just noticed that that subscribe button is blocking my head. Stick me over here. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it mute myself again. The process is so interesting. Yeah, you're normally, you know, normally you're seeing live design. This is, this is live music, right? So trying to create some tension here. Now I'm thinking I, I want to have this da -da 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 da 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 I want to have this happen maybe in this section here. Um, there's already a lot going on right there. Maybe I'll, I'll have it start just a little bit before. You can also kind of sometimes go for like a, almost like random note generation. And it too creates tension because in this case, you're kind of hearing like zuh, zuh. Actually, let's do that first. Change my mind. Random craziness for the whole thing. All right, here we go.
It's all in the mind. What's up, Cody? <laughs> Cody's been Cody's been around since I was originally doing live music composition screams. Part of the impetus for bringing all of this back was from those Twitch days. You've seen it all. Uh, Steve, funniest keyboard thing I ever saw was the Archer voice actor, H. John Benjamin, pretending he could play, and he did some awful jazz. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that dude. That dude is hilarious. Huge Archer fan, too. He's in so many things, and Bob's Burgers, too. Okay, so I added that little, I, I just kind of liked this, that crazy staccato thing. Did I turn my mic back on? I did, okay. I, uh, I liked that kind of crazy staccato thing, so let's... Let's play these back now and see if any of this, what we've got here. And what I'm gonna do real quickly, is I'm gonna set up a bus. Let's go in, uh, hear me breathing heavy? I, I get very, you know, before, before my fitness days, uh, Aunt Pruitt knows this, I, I believe. I, um, I used to just say like, hey, I get my workout, you know, at the piano. Cause I, after a good 30 minute session, I'm, I'm sweating, you know. <laughs> Seems gross. I mean, I'd be sweating anyway, most likely, but um, uh, even still. Granted, I'm also not typically doing it under all these lights, but... Um, oh, and you know what? I was going to kill this one. Here, it's a little too... too much purple. Sorry. Ugh. Okay. Better. All right. Let's go ahead and add Studio Reverb. And we'll do a great haul. How great is it? Super great. And then we're gonna do pre-fader sends on all of these so I can, um, again, independently control just how much I want going to that reverberated signal. So specifically for like the staccato ones, this is gonna be key. Let me pull this side by side. This will be key because there's already some reverberation on there, but um, I, I, want, I, want, I want there to be a little bit more and I want it to really kind of stick out. So let's go ahead and assign each of these to that reverb bus and send one. I'm gonna have to redo the pre-fader. And you can also, again, what I love about this, like maybe I'll just have the staccato uh, reverberation. It'll be mostly on the right side, all right? So we can just kind of hear what that sounds like. Oh. That I, in it, I inadvertently did dry instead of wet. <sniffs> Duh. All wet, no dry. Just to clarify. Brain is not... And I'm in composition mode. It's high. <laughs> Do you find this, designer friends? When you're in designer mode, all right? Drawing, illustrating, creating, whatever you're doing. Go back to, like, technical mode. It, it, you have to, like, like kick, kick start it. <laughs> Because now all in my head, I'm just hearing, like, how do I get more dissonance? And I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Okay. So that sounds pretty good for the staccatos. Let's hear the legatos here. I'm gonna keep these.
Now, part of part of what I'm doing here, just so you're not going, none of this seems to fit. Um, <clears throat> Because these sections are recorded separately now, what I, what I intend to do is to, again, group some of these motifs together where they make sense, right? So like where I just stopped here, that, that's just kind of a weird, this is a weird dead spot. Although the staccato takes over a bit. Um, and you've, you've got the, uh, the dissonant minor second up here at the top track. But the whole point is trying to find where those transitions kind of will go together and then we'll probably on a, in a separate stream I'll put these together and kind of sequence this. But this is a pretty good start. And I really like I really like this intro. I think this works nicely. And with some of that staccato, it could work. Now this is another example here where maybe I don't need so much of the direct sound of this minor second. I can send most of this through to the um, the reverb bus. So And depending upon how much of the the bowing I want to hear, again, now, because I have it pre-fader, this fader here is controlling all of the dry signal discreetly. So if I pull it out, you're only hearing the reverberated signal. The more of this I bring back in, and again, in terms of mixing, that's probably something I do, is you sort of start with it kind of it's, it's almost like a pad, right? You're just keeping this kind of in the background. But now we're going to start to introduce more of that direct sound and, you know, again, maybe some of those tremolo hits in there. So that's okay. For the moment, bring this down. I might need to use separate buses here because I'm definitely feeling that they're, they're all occupying a bit much <clears throat> of this one. Okay. Layers and layers of voices, yes. Piano workout for the wind. <laughs> Thank you, Ant. That's, you know, no one better to give, to give me the thumbs up. Although, as you know, I've now worked to proper, I've, I've moved to proper workouts, so, you know. But I still, it still happens when I'm playing the piano. It still, it still feels the same. All right. So now let's do, we've got another, we've got like nine more minutes. Uh, let's add, let's add some accents on the Moog here. Now, I've got to figure out why I'm not hearing sound from this, which I was minutes ago. Um, ignore this, so hold on one second. It's disconcerting that I'm seeing that. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting something. Now, why am I not hearing that, though? Are you hearing it? There we go. Okay, so now that we're not using or not relying on um, the soft synth anymore, the VSTI, I can simply, I wish this didn't fade up from black. Uh, I can simply just add a new track here. Let's record this in stereo. Call this Moog One, not to be confused with Rogue One. And here I'll even, I'm gonna add a different shot. Just bear with me here. Let's add the Moog shot in here. Uh, 
stick this again we'll just kind of go right here all right and we're just going to add we're, we're, i'm going for dissonance all about dissonance all right now this is monophonic so you know it's all about it's it, it's it's careful careful uh usage of what notes i'm hitting here Could use a little bit of tuning too. So maybe I'll tune it um, as we're getting into it. All right. Maybe a little more glide. That's, that's kind of cool. That's gonna work. All right, let's do that. Here we go. And I actually like it with the. Let me do it an octave lower. Ooh, what do you think about that? That's cool. Okay, here we go. And now notice I'm on a discrete channel, so again we don't have to worry about the the loop back um, thing that we were talking about before. So I'm on a discrete stereo pair input here. All right, here we go. I think I'll tune it while I'm playing it as well, so we'll kind of really get a little bit of that uh, phasiness in there. All right, here we go. Some craziness. All right. Maybe I should do the piano and the Moog separately, but that was, that was kind of neat. I liked that. Creepy with shades of sinister. Love that, cow. Nasitalka Pekka. Sounds great. Oh, thank you. It's, I mean, it's something, right? So here, let's go ahead in here. Let's just pump this up a little. Yes. All right, and let's put this one. I'm just going to stick this. I'm going to stick a verb 
a native reverb on here on the track itself. Um, let's do this TSR reverb. This one has some kind of dark. Actually, maybe I want this one kind of bright because this sound is so dark. So let, let, let's hear what this sounds like with a little bit of this. By the way, th those tuning inconsistencies, yeah, that's analog. So, you know, it sounded like there was like a momentary, uh, like electrical, um, just power like change, you know? This is using a really, biz it's a very bizarre voltage that this thing runs at, strange wall wart. And uh, you, you typically you have to tune these things live and on the fly. So as I was adjusting the oscillators, I, the, the oscillators are purposely right now slightly detuned. But that little momentary glitch when it just sort of went out of tune while I was hitting one note, that's analog. Really hard to fake that in the digital domain. You can simulate Moogs all you want, but those inconsistencies that are so random, I mean, I've seen it in some of the algorithms. They're pretty good, but. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. And this reverb just gives it a very dark, bright, but also still dark, creepy. This was perfect, because here, here it is without verb. Still good, but now. I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. Let's take a quick listen and then we are done. Save. Oh, what is it asking me? <laughs> Saying goodbye now. All right, friends, that's all the time we have. So thanks so much. We're going to be cut off any second now. So we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.